Hello and be welcome to a Let's Develop interview on the Test Roots project and more specifically on the Watchdog Eclipse plugin. With us today is Moritz Beller, one of the developers in the project, who will tell us something about the project scope and what's actually going on with the Watchdog tool. Okay then, uh, hello Moritz, thanks, uh, thanks for joining me. Um, how about you introduce yourself with a couple of words? Hi Sven, so thanks uh, first of all for having the opportunity to present me and my research here in your awesome uh, series. Um, okay. As you said, my name is Moritz Beller, I'm originally German um, and I'm doing a PhD in software engineering in Ari van Dersen's um, group in the Netherlands uh, at the TU Delft. Okay. So uh, I heard that your project is called Test Roots and you're developing an Eclipse plugin that's called Watchdog. So maybe as a start you give us some overview of the project and what the uh, plugin actually does within that project scope. Sure. So um, the, uh, um, the original idea for this uh, research has come from my supervisor Andy Seidman and as you said it's called Test Roots. So Test Roots facilitates several steps and watchdog is the first of those. Um, so as any good researcher um, we want to first assess the current status and that's really what watchdog does at the moment. The long-term plan is to develop it further but we're at the very initial state here. Um, so what do we actually do? Um, we uh, with watchdog we want to know how people test in the wild. So in 1975, there's been a very famous paper by Fred Brooks called The Mythical Man Month. And in this paper, he claims that 50% of project effort is spent on testing. And that's something that he generally, really generally says. And it's also, the, the, in the way he says it, is not really a scientific um, a sound. So it's basically, scientific. basically claim. Yes, it's just a claim, more or less, based on his, of course, a vast experience, but it's still a claim. So um, the questions that we had on this was, A, um, is it still true? I mean, there have been many advances in uh, software engineering, and of course, you show a lot of them in your, in your series. Um, so like Maven, for example, or Eclipse and code recommenders, all these nice things that we nowadays have and that, yeah, if you think about the state of programming 40 years ago, it was not yeah. anything like that. <laughs> Luckily, it changed a lot, yeah. <laughs> it changed a lot, yes. Um, and uh, testing um, has also changed a lot, I think. So we have, uh, for example, through this, exper um, through this uh, XP uh, development, we have uh, test-driven development, we have um, JUnit, and many people nowadays really um, use testing. So uh, the question is, is it still 50-50? Um, and in fact, um, can we make a sound scientific evaluation whether this 50-50 is really true? Was it ever true, in fact? Um, so that's really the steps that we are taking at the moment. So, so what's your personal assumption? If you say, I mean, we have all these tools like unit testing and stuff, would you say that those tools facilitated testing so that people spend less time testing? Or does it mean because testing is now integrated into the development process, like with test-driven development and stuff, that people actually test more than they tested before? Yeah, very good question. So what's my personal opinion on this? I think um, a, a simple tool like JUnit can really make a lot of difference on a large scale. I, I don't think that typically it's the, the mantras that sort of change uh, the way people work, but it can really be small tools. And JUnit, I mean, if you look at... Uh, how much uh, usage uh, JUnit has experienced in practice, you find like every second project uses it to some extent, at least every second Java project. Yeah, that definitely. Is. And then, of course, if you look at other languages, you see all these XUnit uh, frameworks that are basically clones for other languages of, of JUnit. Um, so my exp what I would say is that, yes, testing has gone a lot further nowadays, and it's much more automated than it used to be. Um, mm -hmm. On the other hand, also I think we have a different um, opinion about what testing is. If you uh, read uh, Brooks' paper, um, you'll find that he also considers debugging a testing activity. And I think most people nowadays wouldn't agree with that. We would probably see testing as something fundamentally different from uh, debugging. Yeah, yeah I, I can absolutely see that. So uh, let's talk a little about your actual tool, the Watchdog 
Eclipse plugin. Mm -hmm. um, so from the name, I take that this project actually, or the plugin actually uh, like observes what I'm doing in the IDE and tries to figure out whether I'm testing or developing other stuff. Is that right? Exactly. Okay, so, so how, does, how does that work? I mean, uh, we just talked about that there are several activities like debugging and testing and writing code and whatever, and you're probably switching back and forth like every couple of seconds. So how do you determine what kind of task I'm currently working on? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so you could say, of course, um, um, well, why don't you just sit next to people with your stopwatch and you sort of stop the activities uh, that you that they are doing? Mm -hmm. um, of course, this doesn't scale, and I think that um, especially when you work in a test-driven uh, way, you have a lot of context switches, fast context switches, and if you put a human like me to kind of watch over your shoulder to do that the um, recording will not be as precise as what we do with Watchdog. Um, okay. Yeah, so how do we do it precisely? Um, as you said, it's an Eclipse plugin, so it um, uses all the um, existing Eclipse infrastructure. And you can, um, uh, if you write a plugin, you can even um, capture um, Eclipse internal events. So, for example, um, when you're executing a JUnit test, and JUnit is part of the JDT ed uh, edition of Eclipse, um, which is the standard uh, Java um, development uh, tools for Eclipse, um, I think that's probably what most people will use, um, you can capture uh, any event whenever a user um, executes uh, a test. And you do not only get this um, this event simply, but it carries along some additional information, like for example, the, du uh, the duration of the test um, cases, how many test cases you executed, and whether the result was successful or not. Um, so we do this for a couple of other test-related um, events, like for example, when you're um, looking at a test code or modifying a, a test class, that is, um, and when you're um, uh, yeah, browsing uh, production code or modifying production code. And uh, we have some, because we really, well, it's called watchdog, so it obviously watches what you do, but we really want to um, minimize the impact uh, that we have on people's um, behavior, so to speak. So we really, we really don't want to be the big brother and we're never going to, going to use the, the data for anything that could be like performance oriented or something. Um, uh, so, in fact, you can completely you can use Watchdog completely um, anonymously if you if you like. But um, it's actually good if you give us your email address. You don't even have to give us your name, but uh, it's also good for you. And I think we'll come to that later. Um, so uh, the 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 thing is that um, um, we capture these internal Eclipse events, and then um, we never send out any project data. So whatever you're working on in your IDE really stays with you. Um, therefore, we have some. Uh, so you're collecting uh, only for me to get it right. You're collecting only what I'm doing, not content-wise, but in terms of the action I'm taking. Like exactly. I'm executing a test, but you're not logging like what kind of test or for what project or something like that. Exactly. Okay. So, yeah. Um, if you share some information on the project that you're working on with us, that's very nice because then we can actually, um, well make some more qualified statements um, mm -hmm. and that really helps us but if you don't like to do that it's perfectly fine with us um, mm -hmm. so uh, yeah if you're if you're uh, modifying something um, we see okay the editor has been has been opened and we can capture that event um, and once we capture the event um, it's uh, um, we can um, we have some heuristics for determining whether okay this is a test class or this is a production class, okay. Okay. and a very simple <laughs> uh, thing that actually works very well we've discovered is if the path or the file name contains simply test in it. Yeah. So, so, makes so, sense, yeah. That's like exactly. one of the one of the most widespread uh, conventions probably that test classes just have a test in their name. Definitely, which makes sense. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. I mean, so then th there can be some. Uh, sorry, there can be some uh, uh, more uh, um, refined um, things that we do, of course. Okay. For example, we look whether you have a JUnit include in there, and we also look for other frameworks like Mukito or PowerMock. So um, this mm -hmm. 
this really um, captures almost all cases, I would say. And if if you have like a really particular um, case, so for example, some people who still use JUnit three, um, then they'll just create a, an issue uh, in our database and say, "Hey, um, I just noticed that my uh, my testing activity isn't actually recognized by Watchdog. What's wrong there?" And then we can look into that. And we've done that in the past with JUnit three, for example. And okay. um, it's typically really easy to um, to fix those issues. So okay. if you have such a problem, um, we're gonna fix it. <laughs> okay, that sounds like a promise. Yes. Um, so I imagine that you want to collect data from many, many, many developers to get uh, a broad overview of what people are actually doing. So uh, how do you get people motivated? What's in for me? I mean, I install that plugin, I give you my data, and then what? Yes. Basically, there's a three-step uh, plan for you. So there's um, some immediate information. You'll get um, immediate statistics on your own behavior in the IDE. Um, which means uh, you will get a new view in Eclipse um, where you can have we have some nice diagrams on how you developed your stuff. Which means, okay, um, how much of your of my time, maybe in the last hour, was I actually testing, um, and how much of my time went to production code? Mm -hmm. Now you might say, well, this is maybe very trivial, but nobody really knows that. And in fact, we did a study with um, students at TU Delft. And they overestimated the time that they're, or the effort that they're going to put into testing threefold, which means okay. they, yes, that was wow. really, um, that was really eye opening. So they thought they were going to spend 27% of their time on testing. In actual fact, they only spent 9% of their time on testing. And <laughs> I mean, like if you, far away from the 50%, isn't it? <laughs> definitely far away from that. And it's, it's also particularly interesting because they have a, we have a requirement to have at least 75% Z0 um, test coverage. So they do test and they do have this requirement. And they, 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 have match the requi they match the requirement, so they got exactly. the 75%. Really? Exactly, okay. with, so little, um, with so little testing. <laughs> Which so again shows that it's quite easy to get high test coverage with exactly. just not that much effort, right? Exactly. <laughs> but that's a different point, I guess. Uh, Definitely. So, yeah. okay, three-point plan. That was the first point. That was the first point. Um, the second point that you will get, and that's not yet online, but we're in the process of, of shipping that, is some project reports slash user reports. So if you're a company, um, you're going to want to compare maybe some project teams. And for that, we of course have anonymized the data from the single users, but we give you some really concrete data um, that's more involved um, and more needs more analytical power than what we can offer um, instantaneously in the IDE. So that's, uh, mm -hmm. that's those reports. Um, they should be available sometime in January. So um, how, do, how, how do you track users to assign them to Teams? Is that via the email address that I can optionally provide? or um, If you, well, the, um, what we assume is that if you're working together in one organization, and you, you you can fill that in. Then we group the the people together by the organization and by the group. Okay. Um, and otherwise, um, if you're a company, you can just come to us and say, "Oh, these are the people who belong to one project," and then we'll group them together manually. Mm -hmm. um, makes sense. Yes, but um, again, the single um, user report that everybody who shares their email addresses with us gets is um, something that only this user will ever get. So we're mm -hmm. not going to um, publish the data, at least not in any form where you can associate the email address or any personal information with the other data. And um, we're also not giving that away to management for, well, obvious reasons. Yeah. Um, I don't think you can use the data actually to do any performance um, uh, evaluation. But, well, you never know what management... Yeah, managers people. could still try, right? Yes, I mean, exactly. Yeah. It okay. wouldn't be the first uh, case in history. Yeah, definitely. Say. I mean, there are even people trying to use code coverage to evaluate testers' performance. So, <laughs> yes, <laughs> nine percent of your time, right? Yes. Uh, okay, that was point three, I guess. So that was point two. A, 
Uh, so, uh, two, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. So point three is? <laughs> so the third point is that you can win awesome prizes. So we have some uh, mechanical keyboards to uh, ruffle away, um, which is of course nice if you're a coder and you like to have the nice coding uh, feeling. And then we also uh, ruffle away some noise cancellation headphones in case your office mate wins the mechanical keyboard, which might, might be a bit too loud. Um, <laughs> I, I would actually like one of those, so I'm going to participate. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, and then we have uh, an Android tablet also, okay. so quite nice prices actually. Not bad. So uh, since I already stated that I want to start, maybe I will use uh, the, the tool even for one of my next Let's Develop series just to, to see how much time I'm actually spending on testing when I do a series about test-driven development. Um, where can I get the tool from? Um, you can get the tool from also basically three different ways. <clears throat> the easiest of all is the Eclipse Marketplace. So you can just install it from within your Eclipse IDE. Um, you um, launch the Marketplace, which is, uh, depending on your Eclipse installation, I think it's in the window or help menu. Yeah, it depends or, a bit yeah, on whether yeah, you're using depends. Linux, Mac, or yeah, whatever. Right. Um, and then you... Um, uh, you just search for um, Watchdog, and it's the first and only hit. And you can just <laughs> click install, and then you'll get the latest. And Easy enough, version. yeah. Yeah. So, two other possibilities? Well, um, the other one is uh, through the normal way of um, just our update site. Okay, yeah, obviously. Just copying the update site and then. Um, inserting that into Eclipse. And the third way is to um, use the new code recommenders infrastructure. Yeah, yeah, I saw a tweet about that. Mm -hmm. um, so together with the code recommenders, uh, the, the question was, how can we um, foster scientific uh, work with Eclipse? And I mean, of course, if you do science, um, the typical problem that you always have is find study objects everybody has the problem. Yeah, it's definitely. really, we, we noticed in the past uh, six months that it's really difficult to get users on board. Um, I mean, now we have quite some nice things which actually make it worthwhile to install our plugin, not only from the perspective, uh, from our perspective, but also from a user pr perspective. And I think that's really one thing that you need to have. Um, but on the other hand, you also need visibility. And it's really difficult to get this visibility. So um, our idea had been, okay, if you're in the Eclipse Marketplace, you're competing with some almost 2,000 other plugins. It's really difficult to find mm -hmm. you there. Yeah, definitely. And also, I mean, universities don't have the marketing budget of, um, of big companies. So um, what can we do? And Code Recommenders, you know, it started from your university, of course, originally, um, with Marcel Bruch. Um, they offered us the possibility that we create some kind of smaller marketplace um, where other universities can also um, put their plugins into and that way you can, we're basically one of four plugins at the moment uh, in this code recommenders ecosystem and the only one in the science group. Um, and that way people who are interested in the latest and greatest technologies from universities um, <laughs> have one unique place where they can, can find us. That sounds really good. Out of curiosity, yeah. uh, how many uh, users do you have right now? Oh, we Roughly. have a lot. Yes, um, numbers have really gone through the roof uh, at the moment. So we have over 300 users, which is great. Wow! Now I'm really jealous. <laughs> I, would, <laughs> I would like to have 300 users for my research project, <laughs> uh, but that's a different story. Okay, so uh, I guess we've covered a lot of the tool and the project. Uh, are there any left uh, pearls of wisdom you would like to share with our <laughs> viewers? <laughs> no, I don't think I have any pearls of wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then uh, I thank you very much for this interview. Thank I you. Uh, hope that we can maybe join up in some uh, f uh, future interviews or other projects uh, for Let's Develop. And I wish you, of course, good luck with your user study and the Test Roots project. Thank you and Merry Christmas to Germany. <laughs> yeah, Merry <laughs> Christmas to you too. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. This is it for today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this interview. If so, give me a thumbs up on this video. If not, send me a message, drop me a comment, let me know what you think. Anyways, I wish you a Merry Christmas and I hope to see you next time.